It is every family's, every community's worst nightmare. 10 days ago, 51-year-old mother of three, Samantha Murphy, left her home in the morning to go for her regular run in the trails in the dense bush and parkland east of Ballarat, 100 kilometers west of Melbourne. Then she disappeared. We do hold significant concerns in relation to her welfare, as, and particularly as the days go on. Hundreds of state emergency services members and community volunteers have scoured the landscape and have so far turned up nothing. A week and a half after Samantha Murphy went missing, there are no leads. Maybe people, are, they, they want to know, like everybody we wants to know something. It's just sort of mysterious, you know I mean? Very mysterious, that one, you know? Hey, who, who knows? Her family is desperate for answers. People just don't vanish into thin air. Someone's uh, got to know something. You know, whether it be any little thing that you might think's relevant, just call the police, let them know. Mum's a really strong woman, and she's far too determined to give up this fight. I know she's out there somewhere. The case has captivated Victoria. But despite extensive media coverage, there have been few new developments since Samantha Murphy was reported missing. Former homicide detective Charlie Bazina has worked on some of Victoria's highest profile criminal cases. Every day that goes past, it becomes a lot more difficult. Trying to establish a reason for her absence. Why, as a respectable mother of three, um, who appears to be in a loving relationship at home, um, has inexplicably disappeared um, uh, without any reason. So far, there are only shreds of evidence to work with. This is the last image of Samantha, captured on CCTV outside her home at around 7 a.m. on the morning she disappeared. It's understood a mobile tower picked up a signal from her phone, but police haven't confirmed where or when. Samantha's home is surrounded by a large regional park and tree plantations. This landscape's been described as rugged, but as you can see, it's not inaccessible. Anybody could have gone anywhere around here off these trails. And if they got into trouble and fell over, it would be pretty tough to see them. In recent days, the official search for Samantha has been scaled back, a move that raised eyebrows in Ballarat. To come out so early in the piece to say, well, we've scaled it back down, it's unusual in itself because if she is laying injured in the bush, if she has tumbled into a mine shaft, um, it's all about welfare and each day is crucial to find uh, her uh, if she is in that particular area. Then you start building up a picture of Samantha, about her, what was she like, was she ill? and you, you go where the evidence takes you. One of the most significant pieces of evidence is the so-called ping from Samantha's phone on a mobile tower on the day she disappeared. But there are limits to how much that can tell police. Generally, as we move out into regional areas, um, the mobile towers are set up to provide as much coverage as possible. And so we're talking um, from several kilometres uh, possibly out to 10 or more kilometres from a mobile tower. In many parts of Australia, a ping only indicates the phone was within a large area, sometimes up to hundreds of square kilometres. A single tower can't provide a precise location. What we see in the movies where uh, they're able to triangulate um, you know, exact locations of devices or people really relies upon having a number of towers um, that cover a particular area. And really in regional remote Australia, um, sometimes we have gaps between the towers, uh, depending upon you know, where we are. There are complications to the parks around Ballarat, something mining consultant Peter Darveniza knows well. The city is here, and Wawakurung Regional Park is out here. In the parks where Samantha usually ran, there are old, disused mine shafts. There are some in Wawakurung. He's been in the region for more than three decades. 
He's never seen anything like the community search now going on for Samantha. And what have you been seeing around here? There's a lot of people driving and sort of stopping and looking. I mean, what, what sort yes, of thing? Yes, the, there's significantly greater um, population of walkers, cyclists, motorbike people, cars. It's, it's extremely busy. It's usually very quiet in this area, but at the moment, it's very, very busy. Parts of this area were pine plantations. There's been speculation that perhaps Samantha fell into a disused mine shaft. Peter Darverniza thinks that's unlikely. So this is, this is typical of what you might see, but there aren't many shafts that are as deep as that. Mm. But uh, parks have either filled them in or grated them. Each day the community continues its search is a painful reminder for Sissy Austin. Um, my mind is, yeah, kind of a, a lot thinking about what Sam could be be going through or may have gone through. So um, yeah, my mind's been drifting in all different places with the lead up to the anniversary of my, yeah, attack. So yeah, it's been quite jarring. A year ago, while running in a state forest near Ballarat, she was brutally assaulted. Her attacker was never found. I don't think it's unreasonable that the community's 100% on edge, especially the running community, um, but everyone's out here. It's kind of an eerie feeling out here, but um, you know, those who are searching it, checking in on each other as we kind of walk past each other or drive past each other. Two women runners, one attacked, one missing. Sissy Austin says police have not contacted her since Samantha's disappearance. I'd be looking at the investigation file. Where did the detectives on that stage go, go to? Did they have suspects? Let's start re these suspects. Let's get them alibi. Investigators are asking the community for anything they can get, from dash cam footage to eyewitness sightings. But the Victoria Police Missing Persons Unit didn't take over the case for nearly a week. A mother of three gone missing inexplicably. I would expect the missing persons, detectives to be on the ground, on the Monday, the very next day, uh, because that's what's so crucial. Um, now, if that were the case, bravo to them. Uh, but if it's not the case, then they're paying the price of doing catch-up football. But Charlie Bazina hopes police aren't paying that price and that they will soon have answers. Us, from the outside looking in, they might have, may have different ideas, I don't know. So hopefully they do have ideas and uh, they are going down a certain path.